G'day, Joe here again. Uh, I'm about to do another video of uh, my bike here. And these days we've got to stay indoors with this coronavirus happening and that, and you get a bit bored. And uh, so I've been playing around with the bike again. Um, I've had this thing, the story is I've had it for about five, six years now. I got it uh, before bikes, electric bikes became really popular. And it's one of the fat tyre bikes. I got it from China, directly from China. It took uh, about a month to get here. And it's the Motan, the Admoto Motan 20 inch fat tyre bike. I've had the videos on this before where I've done some modifications and things, but uh, I'll just go through it again a bit. It's a 500 watt, 48 volt uh, bike, fat tire bike, and it came with this battery here. It came with this battery. It's 48 volt, 10.4 amp hour battery, and it's got a hub motor, the Fang hub motor, that's, uh, it came with a 500 watt motor. Now, I rode this around, it was terrific. I live in a fairly hilly area and it uh, afforded me quite a bit of exercise. It, uh, I struggled to get up a few hills and I rode it for a few years like that. Then recently I had the opportunity of buying a, uh, a second hand 750 watt the Fang motor and I upgraded the hub. I'll just show you. You can't really see much but uh, that hub motor there, I was able to take out the internal rotor and uh, swap it over for a, a 750 watt motor that I uh, got second hand off eBay from someone. Anyway, when I did it uh, and tried it out, it was terrible because it had the original controller that was housed in here this little box in here, tiny little thing, it's only about so big and it just didn't supply enough current to the new motor that I put in there. So what I did was uh, I bought some uh, stuff off eBay from China and I bought a bigger controller. <laughs> now, a bit of a mess here, but uh, uh, there's just no room. That controller obviously wouldn't fit inside the little box in there, so I had to sling it underneath the, uh, the frame of the bike there and uh, of course they don't come with easy wiring, you have to figure out wiring and nothing really matched the, uh, the, the stuff that was already on the bike so I had to, I had to put in a new uh, PAS disc here with a few magnets, with eight magnets, it's already got one on the other side there, you can't really see it, maybe you can, there it is there, but uh, the new controller wasn't compatible with that so I had to put another one on and that worked alright because I ended up buying uh, a Voilamart uh, controller because it seemed to have the same fittings as the controller on the original bike and, but it didn't quite work out that way I had to also buy uh, their display to go with that uh, controller because the display on uh, on the, the original display just wouldn't work with that new controller and the same with the throttle the, thr the throttle the existing throttle on that wouldn't work with that controller either so I had to swap a few parts around but anyway <laughs> with the addition of all those things and the 750 watt motor yeah, it's terrific it, it's a very torquey motor and I ride it up the steepest hills around here some of them are quite steep they're 20 degree gradients even and even more and I can pedal up them I just go in pass level one or two if I found that if I go in pass level five which really zooms uh, I I get a, a, a cut out the controller seems to cut out and halfway up the hill suddenly the bike dies and I've got to let it uh, stop and then I have to reset it which is a bit of a pain but if I just work in levels one and two, which still have plenty of power. I can get up just about any hill without any problems at all. But lately, what I've done 
for something to do because I'm stuck at home. I've been playing around with different batteries. Now, not that long ago, someone advertised a battery, a 36 volt battery, this one here, and going very, very cheap. It cost me about $70 to buy that thing. Um, and it's just about brand new and it's a terrific battery it's a 36 volt 14 amp hour battery and that's actually heavier than my uh, 48 volt 10 amp hour battery so obviously it's got more cells in it or it's got uh, better cells even though it's uh, you know less less voltage but that's only 42 volt and I tried it on the bike and of course it ran the bike because I think the uh, cutout on that's about 35 volts or something so 42 volt work, 42 volts with that uh, 36 volt one fully charged works uh, works okay but not much power so I thought look I've got all these other batteries hanging around I've got a lot of these lithium polymer these cells you know these uh, what do you call them pocket cell batteries that I bought years and years ago uh, for when I go camping instead of carrying a big heavy lead acid battery around I bought these uh, uh, remote control device batteries now these are there's two of them here that I've put together there they go there oh, you can't see the two of them I've sort of bundled them up a bit but uh, they're 11.1 volt nominal batteries that uh, charge up to 12.6 and they run at about 8 amps. So I've put the two of them together in parallel to give me, uh, well, 12 volts and uh, 16 amp. And then I had another one, uh, another 11.1 volt uh, group of cells here, 10 amp. And one of the cells died, so I pulled that off, I converted it to a 7.4 volt uh, battery. But then I had this idea that if I were to connect these batteries here in series with the uh, 36 volt battery, I can get this, this one here, plus this one, gives me my 48 volts. Charges up to 54.6 of course. And... I actually put them together on the bike, on the back of the bike. It just so happens that this battery here fits inside there. Oh, I'll see if I can take the take the seat out. <coughs> Sorry about the camera. Zooming all over the place. But that actually slips in there nicely. And the bottom of it has got uh, that similar kind of fitting. I did have to move that a little bit to align it with the uh, the existing fitting on the back on the bottom of the bike, but that does slips in there and slips straight in, which is terrific. Fits nicely. And then added to that, I've got this battery here that I combined with it but what I did was I had to pull this apart and instead of uh, using the 42 volts or the 36 volts in there I rewired it in there so that I had wires here that I could connect the other batteries with it in series to uh, boost my voltage and it worked beautifully now this has got those 18650 cells in it and I wondered a bit about that because the others are the pouch cells and they're the lithium polymers rather than the lithium ions and I was a bit dubious about combining the two but after doing about a thousand k's with this one here combined with the other one it works beautifully and I measure the the voltage draw on on, uh, on both of them after every ride and they both drain equally then I thought, hey, why not try to boost my voltage even more to see how that works? So what I did was I had this other battery that uh, I haven't used for a long time, and I haven't used those for a long time because we can't go camping anymore. Not at the moment, anyway. But anyway, I uh, rewired that so that it was a 3.7 volt battery, 
with uh, giving me a total of about 16 amps so that it matched the amperage of the, the bigger battery. And I did all this wiring here. I connected them up in series so that uh, these two are connected up in series in parallel to give me 12 volt 16 amps and, and that unit is connected in series with this battery to give me an extra 3.7 volts that boosts it up to 14.4 volts with a series connection. Now I added that to the back of this bike here and I'll just show you how I did it in a minute. I'll just turn this off. Now there it is there. I've connected it. I've made a little case for it to contain those two batteries, this little plastic thing that I had lying around. As you can tell, I like to do things on the cheap. <laughs> but it's good fun rather than buying a 52 volt 14 or 15 amp hour battery that costs you probably 800 bucks. I've now got a 52 volt 14 or 15 amp hour battery that <laughs> cost me a tenth of that. But anyway, so that's how I connect them up. I just strap them together. It's not fully strapped at the moment, and I've got to put the seat in as well to make it look pretty. And the whole thing, I suppose, looks just a little bit messy, but who cares? I go riding on the bush tracks around in the park. Now, I'll just show you how it goes. Turn it on there. Turn it on there. So the whole system takes the 52 volts. I was a bit worried that it wouldn't. But it does seem to cope with it okay. And of course I've ridden quite a bit with it anyway, so I know that it works really well. And if I... Oh, wait a minute, I've got to lift my back wheel up. I'm not quite sure I can, how I can do this one-handed, but there we go, I'll try it there. And... Makes it, you can hear it going. Yeah, she rips quite well. Now the whole thing works. Yeah, it's great. Love it. And as I said before, the, uh, the 750 watt motor is very torquey. I love the power of that thing. It's not real fast, but the speed is limited by that controller that I've got on there. I did have another controller prior to using this one, which was a, a 31 amp controller, and that really made the bike go like crazy. This one's only a 25 amp controller. But the previous controller had... Uh, the wiring was just so weird I couldn't attach anything other than the throttle to it. Pass wouldn't work, the display wouldn't work, so uh, I then had to buy this other controller that uh, kind of seemed compatible with the fittings on the motor and the display, even though they weren't fully, but anyway, works better. So there we go. Now I'll add a maybe uh, a bit of uh, bike riding with this video here to show you how the thing zooms and how it uh, handles up some very steep hills. Anyway, that's all for now. Okay, see ya. G'day, I'm here in the park and uh, I'm going to do my little test run just to show you how the uh, 52 volt setup works. I'll show it to you on the bike. There it is there, a bit of a messy arrangement, but it all holds together quite well. Now, I'm uh, going to just try it up this track here, see if I can show it to you. The track's an uphill track, not real steep, probably, uh, oh, I don't know, about 15 degrees uphill, and uh, just show you how it goes now. I'll try it maybe with throttle or pedalic, I'm not sure what I'll do yet. Okay, well, here goes. This will, I'll try it in, uh, in throttle mode to start with. Just to show you. There we go. Look at it take off. Whoa.
Apache rockets. Now I won't go up that slope there, there's a whole group of people up the top there. Now interestingly enough, during this uh, coronavirus episode, this park has never seen so many people using it. They're all out here doing their exercise, which is what I do. It's uh, a very, very busy, and I've, I've actually been waiting probably a couple of hours to try to get uh, this path here clear enough of pedestrians, of hikers, runners, cyclists. Yeah, incredible. It gets used like nobody's business. Now, I'm in Pedelec mode at the moment. I'm going down from where I went up a little while ago. There's another great big hill up here. Quite a steep one. Now I'm in Pedelec mode and I'm in uh, level one. I've increased now to level two just to show you how it goes up. This is a reasonably steep slope and I'm at the top of it. There it goes very well. The old 500 water, I had to put it in top Pedelec mode, level 5, and I had to put it in the lowest gear, pedal like crazy. Now I'm impressed with the 750 watt motor. Now here we go. This is what I mean, pedestrian. goes like a rocket. This is in throttle mode. G'day. Up another quite steep hill. Pedelec in past level two and in probably the middle range of the gears, bike gears. Yeah, okay. Well, that's probably enough bragging about my uh, little modifications. <laughs>